From favorite weather and acne to random world events and a calendar system, the latest Q&A with the Paralyzed team reveals the ways Paralyzed hopes to make their game full of personality. In this video, I'll tell you what the team had to say regarding the latest questions about Live Mode, the Paramaker, and a build by customization. They'll even address a contentious question. How will Paralyzed distinguish itself from The Sims? Before I go ahead and get started though, my name of course is Simmer Aaron. I cover Paralyzed as well as Sims 4 news, speculation, and info videos. My question for you today is which of these features would you most like to see and which do you think are most likely to come? Now I feel like all the time when I'm covering Paralyzed we're mostly discussing build mode and to be fair that's because that's the mode they've mostly shown us and that's the mode they first started focusing on. But because of that I'm going to mix things up today and I'm going to start with live mode and then we're going to go on to the parafolk themselves and then we're going to finish off with some features about build by mode. So first up we got a little bit of information about how NPC townies could work in the world. Will there be NPC animals such as stray dogs, cats, or horses? What about insect and bug collecting? And if possible for the future expansion or DLCs, stray wildlife that is adoptable after a certain amount of friendship like snakes, birds, mice, rats, hamsters, pigs, maybe even a creature that the team creates that is a part of an aspiration. Honestly, I never would have thought of that, but the answer here is there's probably going to be some stray dogs and cats. I'm not sure about horses, at least not in town. No insects or bug collection is confirmed for now, but we'd love to add some more animals to the game. I can't confirm any other, but it's definitely something we could think about. Now, honestly, I'm gonna just put this out here. I think that stray horses right in the base game could be a glitch haven disaster. So I personally kind of hope they don't do that. I'm not saying they should never do that, but I think that just might not be a good move and might not be a good thing to focus on. I do like the idea of some stray dogs and cats, but like I said, for me, it's just not a must, especially right off the bat. But since we're on the topic of NPCs, let's actually talk about the world itself. Now we already know that upon launch, there will be a single open world and many have had questions about how travel and relationships would be impacted because we know in Sims 3 we did have an open world concept but if you traveled outside of the world with the exception of course of the university pack and the world adventures pack then you would lose all your relationships. How will pairs traveling to and from different worlds look in the game itself? Like say if a para was visiting friends, would they have to go on a train station or an airport before the players saw a loading screen or would it be an immediate fast travel button, which of course is what we're familiar with with Sims 4. It's not something we have decided yet, we only have one world or town at release. Traveling to other places is definitely something we're interested in though, but we'll most likely brainstorm about it once the game is out and we're ready to roll out. So I think that's a fair answer because again, they're only planning on one world upon launch. So it's just something they probably haven't thought about and they kind of want to see how successful the game is first, I would guess. Will pairs be able to build relationships with pairs from other worlds like long distance? This is something we talked about during the brainstorming sessions. I think it'd be great, but we are still a little bit far from taking and confirming this kind of feature for now. For now, we are just planning on one world of release, but maybe that could also be pair of folks from imaginary worlds as well. Now, I don't know exactly what they mean by imaginary worlds. That could be really interesting to explore. I suppose for a parafolk kid, they could go into their own imaginary world. Definitely a really unique, interesting concept. Not something that I need for the base game personally, but something that would be unique and distinguish them. Could there be field trips? Say to the rabbit hole with pop-ups, museums, movie theaters, libraries, cultural centers, high school, etc. That could be nice, however, we're focusing on the pair's home first, but we'll study those ideas when working on more public lots. So again, guys, they just aren't there yet, and I do hope that we have some interesting things to do with in the world. I'm sure we'll have at least something, but what's going to be in the world? I'm not really sure yet. I know in the past they did say they want to have restaurants, for example, but they haven't confirmed whether or not those restaurants will be playable. If I have to guess, upon base game, they probably will be a decent amount of rabbit holes, but that's just my guess, and I could be totally wrong on that. I know this is far in the future, but has there been any thought of types of interactive events or things to do around the world? 
We are thinking about having random events to help make the world attractive and engaging. For now, it's only the brainstorming phase soon. So again, as we're asking these questions, just be understanding that they haven't even gone into this mode yet. They're working on some things with build, and I think they're also working on the Paramaker currently. So it's understandable they don't have the answers to this, and rather than not overpromise. But I do like the idea of some world events, kind of like festivals, I guess, is all I can think of. But hopefully we can get something that's a little bit unique and really interesting and makes the world feel lively. So again, of course, there's a lot in the brainstorming phase, again, as live mode is something they're going to work on in the future. However, a lot of people now really are interested in talking about Paramaker features and also, of course, parafolk personality which as you all know is what I care about most is the parafolk personality. Sorry if this one has been asked before, but about the para's body, is there any plan to add something like a diet or a gain weight system in the game? For now, we want your paras to be able to gain weight if you don't exercise and eat junk food and lose their weight or gain muscle if you're having a healthy lifestyle. I personally have no problem with that. If you're new to my channel, you might not be aware of this, but I have suffered from an eating disorder on and off for many years. And I said originally, because someone had a question in the past video about someone said they wanted to be able to go on restrictive diets, and I was kind of against that idea, but a basic calorie weight gain based system, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We've had that in a number of The Sims games. Hey team, I was wondering if you'd want some parafolk to like or tolerate certain weather more than others. Like someone that could do much better in the cold than the heat or someone could love a good storm while others hate it. Yep, we would definitely like that. It could act like a soft boost for morale or some activities. So I really do like that idea. I like the idea of any favorites, honestly. So I would absolutely love that. And as someone who personally really enjoys all kinds of weather, but especially stormy and rainy weather and a little bit cooler weather, I do think it kind of speaks a little bit to the personality. So not a must, but something that would be really nice, I think. This is more an idea than a question, I guess, but during cold weather, can pairs have an urge to sit down with a cup of hot chocolate? That's a lovely idea. Sometimes it's just one of those days for your para where they want to enjoy their nice chocolate and a lovely view. I could totally relate to that. So I noticed they didn't really answer that question, but at least they didn't dismiss it. So probably just something they haven't thought about yet. I knew I saw Sebastian in the summer fun video with a bad sunburn. Will skin tones change depending on weather, such as tans or freckles appearing on paler para? We don't plan on changing your para's skin tone automatically, but you could could indeed get a sunburn if you stay in the sun for too long or even acne for your teenager. So they have mentioned this in the past where they want to have some functional features such as functional acne and sunburns. But again, these are things I think that are extra additions that do add to realism. I do like them. But again, I don't know if it needs to be in the base game, at least for me personally. Although I do think I understand why people would want those. I would love them if they can pull it off. How many traits are you planning on having at launch? And do you think you'll add others later? For now, we are at the step of deciding how traits will work, which of course is really important, and their impacts on the gameplay. Once this is all fought out, we'll be able to create a list of all the traits we want to add into the game. In any case, we'll add more and more traits in updates after release, which I really like. The idea that we're going to be getting these free updates where they're adding more content. Now, of course, this kind of confirms for me that they're probably going to go with a trait system. So it'll be really interesting to see how those traits are played out. If you want me to, I actually have an idea of my dream trait system and how I think it could be worked to make it really dynamic. But here is the thing. They're currently working on how traits could work in the game or brainstorming it. This to me is make or break for the gameplay. I think that'll be fun for build by mode no matter what, but to me, this is the number one thing. So I'm really interested to see what they do with it. Will there be a prom in Paralyze? Not to say we could see the inside of the school, but I'd love if we could dress up our teen paras and help them choose or reject dates. The idea of them possibly ditching prom and getting bummed or feeling like, they're too cool would be cool too. I'm totally fine with rabbit holes, etc. That'd be nice to have a special event for prom, but it's not confirmed yet, but definitely we will consider it. Probably a lot of you guys had prom or school event canceled this year, so it'd be nice to live the prom we didn't have. The dance battle, venue, and a queen king idea are really neat. We don't really have all that in Quebec or France, but we're very aware of this tradition, so we'll keep that in mind. 
That actually really brings to mind something interesting is that The Sims is very much an American-centric game, even though they've tried to get a little bit away from that. So because this is not being created in the United States, I do think we're going to see a different take on things. And that's something I hadn't thought of before in terms of how they could distinguish themselves, right? Make it feel less American. So I think that actually could be a really good thing. I do hope, though, that we get a lot of interesting gameplay for teens. We all know we really want something like that. I shouldn't speak for all of us, but I think a lot of us would just really like to see the life stages all have really unique things to do. So if there's no problem, I'm actually okay with it. I just want it to be unique and I want them to have distinct things to do. Like I said, maybe making it feel a little less American might be good step. Now on to build mode. We know build mode is already looking highly customizable, but if anything, it's actually invited even more questions about potential features. Hey, I hope you're all having a really good Friday. Thanks for doing this chat. My first question is, how many of the furniture items that we see in Maggie's Loft are fully in the game? And can they be resized and worked with the color wheel and customizable features? I would see that the majority of these will be in the game once they have been reworked. The customizable feature is still work in progress, but I think the goal is to be able to change as many objects as possible. For the loft, about half the furniture was specifically created for Maggie because she is that special. Since we can have townhouses, if I put a plant right next to the wall, will the plant clip through to my neighbor's house? Would the player be able to put a window on the shared wall? Or will there be a limit of things that can go there? Yes, it most likely will clip through the neighbor's house. As for the windows, it could be possible, there, but there won't be a shared wall. Basically, for townhouses, it will be necessary to have two walls right next to each other so that each house can be closed off, which means that it would take a window on each of these two walls to see into your neighbor's house. I hope they explain this correctly. I think it's really cool they're going to have townhouses, and I also really like that they admit that something would cause it to clip. They just flat out say that. They don't say, oh, maybe, or maybe you could do a workaround. No, they just say, yep, that would cause it to clip. So we know we can change the width of the bed, as shown as one of the videos. But will be able to modify the length of beds to the point where pairs of taller heights won't be able to use the shorter beds. Will taller pairs not be able to fit into bathtubs as well? Currently, it's planned that all pairs will be able to use all the furniture no matter the size of the furniture and the height of the pairs. Yeah, I'm really interested in that because I would think that would cause some clipping issues and some other things. If anybody has any insights to this or the type of animation, I think they're doing procedural animations with the height sliders. Let me know in the comments below because I'm frankly kind of perplexed by the idea. I just have one burning question. Will we be able to change wall thickness? There are some homes with thicker walls and so on. We are currently testing that. By example, this means that the doors and windows will have to adapt to the new thickness, right? Can't confirm, but they are working on it. Again, something I know I'm not a builder, but something I personally wouldn't think about. A way to maybe distinguish themselves, but probably not a must-have feature for most. Based on the frame and pillow window, and also Maggie's latest video, I'm wondering if we can make our own floor tiles wallpapers to add to the game. Yes, you will be able to add your own wall and floor designs to the game. Hey team, after watching the frame video again, do you have any more ideas you could upload pictures too similar to what you do with the pillow? I think modders will be able to reuse the system in different ways, but on our side, carpets, t-shirts, or even cakes are a possibility. I know that's a lot of information, let's be honest, a lot of unknowns as well, but I did want to finish off this video with an interesting insight. Many have asked time and time again how Paralyzed will be different from The Sims. And on the whole, I always say that I see The Sims and Paralyzed as separate games, I want them both to succeed and do well, but of course, comparisons are going to be made no matter what, and here's what the team had to say. There are some things and directions we want to keep secret for now. We really want to innovate and allow unique personalities for our pair folks. So I can't give a precise answer on that. There are also things we want to do, maybe, that won't be possible due to technical difficulties. But yes, I think the main vision would be to have various personalities that really impact the gameplay in as many ways as possible. Also, we are not focusing on gameplay right now, but you will know more when we actively start on that. That's a really interesting note to end on. If you made it to the end, let me know what you think about that final statement, if you think it will come to pass. 
I personally really hope it would because that would make for an amazing game. But again, it's rather vague, so we don't know what it means. Let me know what you think about all these updates, all these questions and answers. I always love covering Paralyzed because the comment section tends to be a little less tense. So I hope you all are having a wonderful day. And of course, as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.